Hello, hi. So today I'm going to talk about how is life as a quant in uh, Europe. I have been living in Europe and working in Europe for last uh, eight to nine years now uh, in different cities, but mostly in uh, London and Amsterdam. So I'll share my own experience, but I'll also share from what I have learned from other people's experience working in this part of the world. I worked for US companies and I've also worked for some Asian companies. Um, but the experience of working with uh, European companies is a bit different in many ways, actually. Um, the work culture is quite different in Europe compared to that in the US. And certainly in the financial service sector, you will see that the work culture is quite different in European banks and European financial service company compared to that of the US financial service companies, right? Work-life balance is a bit better, but that's not with quant finance actually in, in, in quant related activities. The pressure is more uh, because the stakes are quite high uh, and uh, you have a lot of things to uh, things to do, you know, you know. Um, so the pressure is a bit high in, in quantity finance uh, in any company in the world. I think it's not just with quant finance. I think any technical job you do uh, these days, uh, the pressure is a bit high, right? But relatively, if you compare that with uh, jobs in the US, similar jobs in the US, I think it's, it's a bit less. Right? In terms of opportunities, I think there are plenty of opportunities in Europe, in London, in Amsterdam, Paris, Frankfurt in quant finance area simply because uh, these countries do not have uh, abundance of technical talent. Uh, they are in sort of technical talent. So if you have some technical talent in any field, not just in quantum finance, but also in software engineering or AI, then you'll find you can find many opportunities. Certainly in quantitative finance because this is an interdisciplinary skill that requires you to, you know, have knowledge of maths, fi finance, you know, statistics, programming. <clears throat> and also you should have, you know, decent level of communication skills. So to be able to find someone who has got all these skills is a bit difficult, right? So when we combine these different skills, it's very difficult to find people. And that's the reason why they're always sort of people with these skills in this part of the world. And hence they are trying to hire people from abroad as well. I am one of them. They have also hired people from Africa, from other countries in, in, uh, in Asia. So yeah, so the opportunities are quite, uh, quite a number of opportunity you can, you can come across. In various types of firms, there are many big banks in Europe, ING, Rabobank, Deutsche Bank, BNP Paribas, um, Credit Agrigol, and then uh, Unicredit, you name it, um, Santander. In the UK, you have HSBC, Barclays, RBS, NatWest, uh, Close Brothers, and I know there are like many, many uh, top class, uh, you know, big banks in Europe where you can work as quant, but you can also work as a quant in various, you know, private funds, trading organizations, you know, pension funds, insurance companies uh, in uh, London or in Amsterdam or in Paris or even in Frankfurt, you can find uh, like, you know, number of uh, trading firms that hire quant people, quant developers, quant analysts, quant researchers. Um, although number of jobs in these sort of firms compared to that of the banks, consulting firms or insurance company is less, also more competitive, but you get more money also in working in these firms. Jobs are a bit less stable if you work in private funds, hedge funds, these places, but you get to learn a lot and it's lucrative, right? You could also move jobs, right? I had a colleague who used to work with me in some some bank and then he moved to work for uh, an energy trading firm singapore based energy trading firm i think it is 
Olam International, if I remember correctly. It has a branch in Ned in Amsterdam, and then he went to work there. So you can you can switch between roles. That's not it's not compulsory that you just stick to one type of role. Yeah, and there is all kinds of companies, so you can you can always try, right? Visa sponsorship is not an issue in Europe compared to that in the US, where getting a visa, getting H1 visa, is very difficult there, right? So that is less of a concern here in Europe. So you, you can always, uh, yeah, you can always find a, a, spon a company that is willing to sponsor you, right? Uh, in terms of other things in life, I think, uh, you know, jobs are a bit more stable in Europe compared to that in the US. You know, companies don't just fire you uh, right away, right? Uh, there are protections in place. In many places you have labor union, so you cannot... Uh, simply fire anyone right and uh, and one of the reason why jobs are a bit more stable is because um, you know the, the 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 companies are a bit frugal in terms of you know paying salaries and you know giving pox you know because they prepare themselves for worse times unlike the US companies that pay a lot of money to the senior executives and when the bad time comes they start firing people right that doesn't happen in Europe so you get less money compared to that in the US but your life is a bit more stable um, and then there are plenty of opportunity to learn actually uh, you'll work with uh, many top uh, class PhDs and, and masters uh, from various top universities in Europe uh, that's a wonderful experience uh, so that's really good most companies in Europe will sponsor you to do, you know, courses from a variety of places, from universities or from other third-party uh, places. And then you can also attend a lot of conferences. Uh, in Amsterdam or in London, you'll find many conferences, quant-related conferences happening uh, throughout the year. So if you want to attend, you can always attend these conferences. Um, another imp important thing is that in Europe, actually, it's it's easy to get a permanent residency. In five years, I think in most countries, you will get a permanent residency. And and in about a year more, I think in six years, you can get a citizenship if you want to get uh, naturalized. Uh, you want to get a passport <coughs> of these countries. And then you can move to other countries also. I know people used to work with me, and then later on, they moved to Abu Dhabi. Some people moved to Dubai, one guy even moved to Singapore. So, yeah, after working for five, six years, you could move back to your own country or just move to other countries to explore new opportunities. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, if you want to pursue uh, studies here in, in quant finance, this is also an amazing opportunity. Uh, simply because I think the course fee in Europe for most universities is less compared to that in the US and uh, I think in most countries you get to live here for a couple of years after you graduate so you can find opportunities here. You know, language is not an issue, there is a perception that in Europe uh, you need to know the lang local language but that's not the case for technical jobs, certainly not in quant finance, nobody will expect you to have you know, local language skills. As long as you are fine with English, I think that should be fine. You should be able to get opportunities here. So if you're willing to, you know, uh, spend some years learning uh, or doing a course, doing a master's degree, many master's degrees in, in Europe are just one year. Right? That's an amazing thing, right? Compared to that in the US where master's degrees are almost always two-year programs, right? Whereas in Europe, you have two-year but also one-year programs. So the, it's less expensive then, right? You can quickly do a one-year uh, postgraduate degree and then, you know, get started working, right? And you can move between the countries. That means if you do it in Germany, you can come to work in Netherlands. If you do it in the UK, you can come and work in, in, in Germany or in Norway, in Sweden. So, um, yeah, so, so wonderful uh, if, you, if you want to pursue... Um, 
some master's program um, or postgraduate program in these countries if you are interested to know if uh, how to sort of apply and what to do um, let me know you can always reach out to me i can help you with uh, some contacts that i know uh, who can help you you know get uh, admitted to universities here in uh, europe in netherlands or in uh, or in uk or germany or any of these other uh, countries uh, yeah there are other uh, amazing things also in uh, in europe for instance in many countries you know getting a mortgage to buy a house is relatively easier compared to that in the us um, most people uh, who have lived here for four or five years most of them have bought a house for themselves um, education is free social health care is quite nice actually uh, uh, you know you, you do pay an insurance but it's a lot less expensive compared to that in the us okay um, and one other thing is that this perception that um, you know language is so important it is important actually in some social circumstances but not in work so that's a misconception many people have about europe okay if you have further questions do not hesitate to ask me uh, i will continue to make such videos also in future so see you in another video guys thanks